da, da, da. What's up, you guys? This is Adana. Welcome back to another PA Q&A Tuesday. So excited to do this for you guys. I really love answering these questions for you guys. Usually I do it in comment form, but we are doing these new PA Q&A Tuesdays where I will be answering you guys' comments live on video. Yay! So let's get into it. Well, actually, before we get into it, guys, if you would like a question answered, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. All right, let's do this. When did you start PA school? Parentheses, like right after high school? Um, no. So I did not start PA school right after high school. I went on and I got my bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences with a minor in chemistry. And then I applied to some med schools, got accepted to a couple of them. And then I kind of like piddle paddled around for a little while and decided that medicine in terms of med school wasn't for me. I wanted more time with my family and da da da. The PA career came into my life. Um, so I just started PA school last year in May. Um, I can't believe that I literally only have two months left of this didactic year, but I do. But there are a couple programs where you can go straight in to kind of like a bridge program where you're in your undergraduate degree. So straight out of high school, you go into this program where it's a bachelor's degree and a PA master's degree all at the same time so like in a matter of like five to six years you're getting that same degree but it's all at the same school and once you apply to that bachelor's degree um, or that bachelor's program you're also applying to the PA program so those are options for those of you who just want to go straight in to PA school from high school how many hours do you study per day so my study habits slash studying hours kind of depends on what I have going on that week or um, that particular day or the next day. A lot of us kind of like study in class as well. So I won't count those hours that we're really supposed to be paying attention to the lecture, but we're studying in class. Um, but we do do that from time to time, especially if we have a test coming up um, within the next like few hours and our teachers are aware of that they're really really like understanding with us um, because I know like we're not always engaging at times but that's just kind of like you're just trying to get as much of the information and see it as many times as you possibly can but on a typical day like generally I'll get out of school anywhere from like 4 30 5 o'clock now thank god I'm really excited about my schedule this semester because it's a lot lot nicer than the last two semesters but when i would get out at five o'clock or 4 30 then i go home and i'm pretty much studying kind of like for the next four hours um you know i do stuff with like my kids and make food and that kind of stuff and then pretty much for like four hours, four to six hours, depending on what I have going on. That's what I'm studying. Um, I'll try to be in bed by 11, 12, the latest, 12.30 sometimes. Sometimes I push one, but I try not to do that just so that I'm able to get enough rest to be actually like productive and functioning the next day. But generally speaking for me, I study about anywhere from four to five hours um, a day after school. Does actually undergraduate school matter? Would two applicants with the same GPA and similar ex extracurricular activities, but one goes to a big university and one attends a small state university, be a deciding factor? Um, I mean, I don't really think that PA programs are looking at like what school you went to per se. I'm sure like going to Yale or Harvard kind of looks good on any application. So I'm sure that looks good to them. But at the end of the day, uh, if you come to the interview and you're just not a good fit for the school, you're not getting in. So yes, I, f I do feel that some of those like, you know, extra things pay, they play a part in you getting an interview but 
ultimately it's you and your personality that's going to get you into PA school. So yes, you may have like all the same stats, um, but one may get in and one may not. And that's all due to the fact that, hey, um, they were just a better fit uh, for the class as a whole, for the cohort that's going through. Um, because a lot of times PA schools also base their, uh, their acceptance on those that they've accepted before, not like the class before, but let's say we've already accepted five students. How are those five students now going to um, kind of intertwine and like collaborate with these five students that we're thinking about accepting. So it's all I like, it's like a big like game. And I actually talked to one of my professors who was making kind of like a statistical analysis of how to, you know, see if you're gonna be a good fit and stuff. Like, I don't know how she's doing it. Like, but she's an amazing statistician and epidemiologist. So I'm sure she's doing gonna do a great job with getting that. Um, but it's definitely not something I would wanna do on a daily basis because I feel like it's difficult in and of itself trying to figure out, okay, are you gonna be a good fit for my school just by looking at your application and then trying to interview you along with all of the other hundred students that I'm trying to interview. I mean, really it's up to you. So that's kind of like my little like moment there for you guys. Yes, um, it, it probably plays a part, but that's not the determining factor in you getting into school. In didactic year, are you going to classes every day or only certain days a week? Also, what specialty or specialties are you planning on going into? All right, so in didactic year, I'm sure it varies from school to school, but you're generally in school every day. I'm in class every day. I know there are some programs that get a day off or get like a full morning off, and I kind of had that worked into my program in different areas, but I'm still in school like every day. So typically speaking, um, my classes will start at eight and they'll end around four, 4.30 for this current semester. Um, my last two semesters, it was like 4.35 and that was really, really tough. But this actually, this semester, we're starting at like nine and ending at like four, 4.30, which is really, really good. Um, but on Tuesdays, we have this really, really long lunch from like one to three, which is amazing. We we don't necessarily have to be in class until maybe 9, 20, 10 o'clock, depending on if you have your sim class uh, early in the morning or if you have a break, you have sim, and then I have my PD class after that. So I, like for me, I don't have to go to class until 9, 20 on Tuesdays because my simulation class doesn't start until 9, 20, um, well, 9, 30. Um, and then on Fridays, we have a community clinic where we go and we work, uh, we work, well, we see patients at the community clinic um, in like downtown and we do that for the, in the morning from around like nine to 12. And then we come back for our clinical rotation day class because we are going to be going on clinical rotations in just a few months. So excited about that. And then we also have PBL every Friday where we're doing a problem-based learning and we're having new cases, seeing new patients, their pretend patients, maybe sometimes based on real patients, but we're gonna diagnose and you know write our notes on how to treat them and such. So it's very, like it varies um, with respect to how long I'm in school and, and when I start and when I don't and when I finish. Um, but typically it's generally like eight to four, eight to five, um, early on in your semesters um, and in your didactic year. And it might get light in the middle and then it's hard again at the end. Or for me, it's it was like kind of hard, super, super hard second semester. And then now it's like, oh, this is a nice break before our rotations. So that's what, um, we typically do with respect to school. It's every day, but it's kind of like staggered on exactly how many hours we're actually like in school getting lectured. What's a PA? What? What do you mean what's a PA? Have you 
not seen my channel? Oh man, you know, so, and this, I'm really excited to answer this question for you because I want everybody to know what a PA is. So a PA is a physician assistant and we are certified licensed professionals who will treat and diagnose and prescribe medicine to the general public. We're kind of, we're taught as generalist in a sense, so we can do like family practice, internal medicine, we can do your, you know, your urgent care stuff and your ER, um, where you'll see many, many PAs in the ER. Um, there, you've probably been been treated by PAs, but then also we can also be specialized as, you know, being a surgical PA or an ortho, like orthopedic PA, or you could be a cardiothoracic PA or a neuro PA. So there are many, many different areas, cardiology, that you can actually go into as a PA and also treat and um, see patients. But we are practitioners that help the general public. We're essential to helping the public because with healthcare as it is and the healthcare system that we're under right now, currently, more and more people need access to healthcare and PAs and future PAs like myself will be the ones that will be kind of stemming that that and, and allowing you all to be able to see practitioners, see providers and get treated and get healthier as the future progresses. So that is a PA. If you want to know more about exactly specifically what we do or the different areas that we can practice in, I suggest you go to apa.org. I will leave a link for that just so that you can find out a little bit more information on what a PA is um, and uh, what we do. Well, thank you guys so much for that. I'm so excited that I got to answer that question for you all, especially for you who asked it, Aaliyah. I'm very, very passionate about my future career and I want everyone to know about it. So for me to be able to answer that for you and just give you a little bit more insight about the profession, I'm excited. So my job is done for today. If you guys have any more questions, leave that in the comment section below. I will be sure to answer them for you. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA and subscribe to my channel right now. And I will talk to you guys next time.